at dining delight. Two in a bed. A romantic trip. These are just three of the prizes on tonight's edition of Three to One. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Rogers. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful reception. I've never had a standing ovation sitting down before, but thank you very much for that. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to 321, the biggest game show on the box. It's a quiz, it's a game, and it's big variety entertainment. A whole hour that the whole family at home and here in the studio can enjoy. There's only one thing that can put the damper on our show tonight, and you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Dusty Bin, here he is. <laughs> Yes, and there he is. The much feared and dreaded Dusty Bin, of course, waiting to send one of our couples off with just a ceramic copy of himself at the end of the quiz. And, of course, remember, if he's won at the end of the programme, all our contestants take home, unfortunately, is a brand-new bin. That's all they get. Off you go, Dusty. We'll see you a bit later on. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> and let's find out who our contestants are this evening from lovely Linda Lee Lewis. Linda, how are you? Hello. All right? Uh, yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. Looking good as ever. Have a nice Smash week. It. Yeah, not bad, not a bad week. Good. Yes, a bit hot and flustered, but not too bad. <laughs> and who are our couples tonight? Right, all our couples tonight are engaged, Ted. Ah, they're not taking the step yet. No, eh? they haven't. Who are they? Right, we have Andy Copping and Mandy Fallows from Manchester, Peter Carr and Laura Patton from Jersey, Nick Swain and Gail Burlingham from Hoddesdon in Hertfordshire. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. OK, Linda. Lovely. <laughs> And uh, Andy and Mandy sounds like a couple of TV puppies, that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you first meet you two? Where was that? Well, it was a nightclub, but, you know, we, uh, we used to work... We used to go to school together. Um, really? Well, nearby, about a mile or so apart, and we used to uh, eye each other up on the school bus. On the bus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that. I used to do a bit of courting on the school bus, yeah. Nice that you're here, though. What else have we got here? Peter Carr and Laura Patton from Jersey, Channel Islands. Are you originally from Jersey? No, no, originally uh, from Cambridge. Are you? Uh-huh. What about this, the way you two met? Tell us about that. We were both uh, in a show, and uh, they had one sketch about uh, children's <laughs> characters, and... Uh, I was Spotty Dog of all people. Um, Spotty Dog? <laughs> now we're back to Andy and Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Though? You took Spot the Dog home and everything was all right, was it? Um, well, my mum said that he was too good for me and it only lasts two weeks. Oh, really? But that was five years ago. Oh, so. good for you. That's well done. Anyway, lovely. And Nick Swain and Gail Burlingham from Hoddesdon in Hearts. And what do you do for a living there, Nick? Uh, I'm a builder. But builder? I'm doing a bit of mini cabin at the moment. Mini cabin, eh? Yeah. Just the top. Well, you've yeah. got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's this? For hobbies, I know you like darts. Are you good at darts? Uh, I like the fro. Like yeah, you like the fro. I like that fro. Like <laughs> That's good. And Gail, what do you do? What are your hobbies and things like that? Uh, amateur dramatics. Oh, so you like crossroads? Oh, well. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you're all here. Anyway, we're going to start the three to one quiz. Now, you know what happens when we do our quiz. We give you £10 to start with, OK? Straight away. And, of course, whatever you win at the end of the first round is what you will get for each correct answer in the second round. But you do get £10 for each correct answer in the first. OK? So if one couple was lucky enough to score two maximums, they could go home with £1,600 from the quiz alone. All right? Here's the first question. If someone is described as a VIP, what do the letters stand for? And that's Peter and Laura. Very, Very important, important person. <laughs> right, indeed, it was. Well done. Which was the last British monarch to abdicate? Again, that's Peter and Laura. Edward VIII. Edward VIII is absolutely right, the Duke of Windsor. He had to get off the throne because of a commoner, whereas normally a commoner has to get off the throne because that dog's run away with a roll. <laughs> Here's the next question. Which pop singer took the name based on the name of Fats Domino? Nick and Gail. Chubby Checker. Chubby Checker's absolutely right. Well done. I didn't know that one, yeah. Who played the part? Who played the part of Scarlet O'Hara in... The... OK, go ahead. Vivian Bantus. Lee. Vivian Lee in the film Gone with the Wind. You're right. What is the English equivalent of saying skull? Peter and Laura. Cheers. Cheers down the hatch. Well done, yes. What animal does a farrier deal with? Peter and Laura. Horses. Horses is absolutely right, yes. What means of transport did Sir Christopher Cockerell invent? Peter and Laura. Hovercraft. Hovercraft is absolutely right. Next question. Near which volcano was the city of Pompeii built? Nick and Gail. Etna. No, that's wrong, and it's on off. Peter and Laura. Vesuvius. Vesuvius is absolutely correct, yes. Well done. In which mountain range is the country of Nepal? Peter and Laura. Himalayas. Himalayas is absolutely right. In Roman numerals, what does the letter L 
stand for? Andy and Mandy. 50. 50 is absolutely correct. So that is our 10th question. And at the end of the first round, we have Andy and Mandy and Nick and Gail on 20 pounds apiece. But in the lead at the moment, would you believe Peter and Laura, 90 pounds they've got. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Lovely. This is the moment where you get a chance to sit back and relax before we get to the second round. Yeah, Laura looks as though she could do with that. Because we get to the point of the show where we introduce our newcomer act, 2321. And this week, it's the chance of a comedy duo who are doing great things up and down the country in colleges and clubs. And they had a big hit at the Edinburgh Festival. A great name with a great future, we hope. Isosceles. <laughs> Hello. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why are we called isosceles? Because we're a triangle. There's three of us. One, two, three. On this case, three, two, one. <laughs> well, I've been working on a ventriloquist act with my young friend Sniggles here, and we'd like to give a short performance for you now. So, when you're ready. Ready when you are? You can't stay here. I want to watch. You can't stay here, because you do... Sorry? You do... I want to watch it. Look, I can't do the voice. <laughs> Go and hide. I'll go and hide then. Yes. <laughs> I think I can safely say that this ventriloquism will be the most astonishing thing you'll ever have seen. Just watch my lips. OK, I'm ready. Shut up. <laughs> well, now, Sniggles, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? <clears throat> yes, but I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Told you it was astonishing. I want to go home. Now, now. Yes, now. No, no. No, no. 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 Oh. <laughs> did, you, did you like that bit? It's quite difficult because it goes so fast. I want to go home. Look, if I can get the audience to say hello to you very, very nicely, will you stay? Yes, but I'm sure they won't. Of course they will by the time I've finished with them. Now, I'm going to count up to three, then I want you all to say hello, Sniggles, and then he'll stay. Of course he'll stay anyway, but it would be a nice gesture, wouldn't it? So, one, two, three. Hello, Sniggles. <sighs> yeah, that's pathetic. <laughs> Now, if this was television, we'd just edit that bit out and do it all over again. So, and a little clue about speaking is you have to open your mouths, because if you don't, somebody might get hurt. So, after three, <laughs> and you at home, one, two, three. Hello, <laughs> That's what I like to see, grown people making fools of themselves. <laughs> now. I'd like to meet that Linda Lee Lewis. Well, you can't. I fancy her. Just forget it. I really fancy her. <laughs> now, what are you going to do to entertain these uh, people? Apart from that... <laughs> are you going to do that tongue twister? I'm not the pheasant plucker, I'm the pheasant plucker's son. I'm only the pheasant till the pheasant plucker comes. Are you going to do that? No! Just as well. <laughs> what about the glass of water in the poem, eh? OK! This is the highlight. Because while I drink a full glass of water, he will recite a poem. OK? Look, I'm going to get the glass. Do you want to stay here or come with me? I'll come with you. Thank goodness for that. <clears throat> Give me the glass. Give me the glass. <laughs> That's it. I've had enough. I've had enough. Are we finished? Yeah, look, I'm so... I'm fed up with him. Let's oh. put him in the bag. I'm not going in there. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, no. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no. Oh, yes, get him in the butt. <laughs> get him in the butt. 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 I told you I'm not going to die, you prat. Indeed, isosceles, lovely. Well, now, Andy and Mandy and Nick and Gail, this time you go for £20 for each correct answer. Peter and Laura, you get £90 for each correct answer. And look at the hands, they're all there, ready to go, as long as they're beside those buzzers, OK? The only difference between this and the first round is that there are only 15 questions asked this time. And, of course, at the end of the quiz, we do have to say goodbye to the couple with the lowest amount of money. So jolly good luck to you, and here we go again. Which poet laureate died in 1984? <coughs> Nick and Gail. Christopher Wren. That's wrong. On offer, Peter and Laura. Sir John Betjeman. Sir John Betjeman is absolutely correct. 
Which animal is sometimes called the ship of the desert? Nick and Gale. A camel. A camel is correct. They say it can go for six weeks without drinking water. So what? Oliver Reed's gone without water for 30 years. <laughs> what was Lee Marvin's one and only hit song, Andy and Mandy? Paint your wagon. No, that's wrong. That was the show, so it's on offer. Nick and Gale. I was born under a wandering star. Wandering star is absolutely correct. Well done. Not easy, is it, when you've got to come like that with it? What basically is sold in a patisserie? Nick and Gale. Cakes. Cakes, indeed, and pastries. Name the Russian mystic who had great influence over the last Russian royal family, Peter and Laura. Rasputin. Rasputin is absolutely right. And which actor assumed a female role in the film... OK, you've anticipated Nick and Gale. Who is it? Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Just about to say Tootsie. You did well then. That's right. Here's the next question. Apart from a young woman from South London, what is a Camberwell beauty? Peter and Laura. Flower. That's wrong. It's on offer. Nick and Gale have gone for it. Is it a fruit? No, it's not a fruit. Would you believe it's a butterfly is what it is. Next question. Which horse won the 1987 Grand National? Nick and Gale. Three seconds have gone, so it will be on offer to the other two. Can anybody remember the 1987 Grand National winner? Nobody... Oh, Andy and Mandy have gone for it. West Tip. No, that's wrong. It was Maori Venture. That's who won. OK, next question. On which of the Channel Islands is the chief town called St Peterport? Peter and Laura. Guernsey. I thought you might know that. Guernsey, indeed, yes. Which film starred Marilyn Monroe with Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon? You've anticipated Andy and Mandy. Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot. A great movie, of course. What name is given to the 180-degree meridian which marks the difference in time between East and West Nick and Gale? Greenwich Mean Time. No, that's wrong. So it's on off. Andy and Mandy. Tropic of Cancer. No, it's not. Indeed, indeed, it's the International Date Line. That's what it is. On what date in the Roman calendar was Julius Caesar killed? Peter and Laura. 3rd of March. No, that's absolutely wrong, yes. Yeah, so I can on offer to the other two. Andy and Mandy. 4th of March. No. <laughs> it's the Ides of March, which I understand is the 15th. Is that right? Yes. What meat forms the basis of Lancashire hot? Andy and Mandy. Lamb. Lamb indeed, or mutton, yes. In which Icelandic town did Reagan and Gorbachev meet? OK, Nick and Gale. Reykjavik. Reykjavik is right. It was so cold, Gorbachev was frozen stiff, and so was Reagan. Oh, in his case, it was rigor mortis. <laughs> Is the speaker, and this is the last question, who is the speaker of the House of Lords? Uh, everyone's holding on that. Oh, Andy and Mandy have gone for it. Black Rod. No, it's not. So that's on offer. Nick and Gale. Prime Minister? No, no. The Speaker of the House of Lords is the Lord Chancellor. So here we are then, at the end of the three to one quiz this week. We've got Andy and Mandy on £60. Nick and Gale have £120. The winners of the quiz are Peter and Laura. £360 they've got. <laughs> Good. So we have to say goodbye to Andy and Mandy. Again, it's gone very quickly, but I know it seemed like forever and a day, isn't it, for you? It's been smashing having you with us anyway. Andy, take care. Jolly good luck to you. When you do get married, give them a round of applause, folks. Huh? Smashing. And we're off right now just for a couple of minutes. We'll see you in part two with the Brian Rogers Connection. Jessica Martin and Andrew O'Connor. Join us there. Part of the show, we've got Nick and Gail playing against Peter and Laura. Now, you know exactly what's going to happen here, folks. We're about to show you three items. At the end of each one of them, one of our guests is going to come here to the table, leave you a clue object, and read you a rhyme, a very short rhyme, OK? At the, when we have three here on the table, you have to choose one to reject if you are the lucky couple who gets through our elimination question. So good luck to all of you, and we're going to go on and have item number one. So here, with a number called Lay Back and Be Cool, a number from the Kids from Fame, are our Kids from Fame, the Brian Rogers Connection. She had love tattooed on her back And a mean old two-tone Pontiac She could put you off with her attitude She said, I just want to lay back Hot Rod Hollywood cruising trip. Oh. She found me crying. 
in a parking lot on Sunset Strip. Great outfits, and what a great number that was, huh? Thank you very much. Going back to the 50s, eh, Helen? Yes, a little bit before my time, but Brian's told me all about them. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Brian Rogers would be very, very happy about that. What are you going to leave the folks here as a clue tonight? It's the New Testament. The New Testament mm -hmm. is the clue. All right, OK. And their rhyme says what? The rhyme is, grass, they say, a profit made, score more if that's what you're paid. They are. They're quite short, aren't they? But very yeah. difficult. Helen, mm, yes, the Brian Thank Rogers you. connection. Thank Thanks, you. Helen. Good luck, love. What do you think, folks? A little too early, is it? <laughs> a few shies around yeah. here. No idea about that one yet? Could be something with good news, because it's got good <laughs> yeah. news written on it. OK, think about it, and we're going to go on and have item number two. And here's a young fella. He's a great guy, actually. You've seen him on Live from Her Majesty's on Copycats, and tonight he's going to tell us the true story of Frankenstein. Andrew O'Connor is with us. <laughs> It was an eerie night, high in the hills of Bavaria. The moon was full. It had just eaten. <laughs> and somewhere in the distance, an owl hooted. Somewhere in the distance, an owl hooted. <laughs> very good, yeah, very good. There was a heavy dew on the grass. He'd been thrown from the synagogue the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Nearby, inside a dark and sinister castle, stood a lonely and scared figure wearing an evening dress, high heel shoes and matching earrings. Yes, it was the very confused Dr. Frankenstein, <laughs> who'd been trying for the past 20 years to create the perfect man. <laughs> Out of bottle tops, toilet rolls and sticky back plastic. <laughs> The doctor looked around him and suddenly realised that <laughs> he'd ladded one of his stockings. <laughs> Outside the castle, a twisted figure was scuttling along the drive. It was Baron Frankenstein's servant, a dwarf with a hump called Igor. 
I'm not sure what the dwarf was called, but his hunt was called Eagle. <laughs> not Eeyore! <laughs> Eagle. Mind you, it was a little horse. <laughs> Eagle walked along singing a song by Hot Chocolate. It started with a cyst. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back inside the castle, the Baron's door suddenly burst open. <laughs> and there, outside the laboratory, was... <laughs> a 16-piece orchestra. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it was Eeyore. I mean, Eeyore. <laughs> Two was dragging behind him a 23 stone corpse. Hold it, hold it. I said 23 stone corpse, not 20 keystone cops. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Igor, you're back, said the Baron. There's no need to remind me, <laughs> said Igor, who was trying to disguise his hump by painting straps and a youth hostling badge on it and pretending that it was a rucksack. <laughs> The doctor looked down and began to take pity on the creature before him. Poor Igor had enormous large ears. <laughs> <laughs> he had a large, bulbous nose, glasses and a moustache. <laughs> and blonde, straw-like hair, which gave him the appearance of a completely hideous monster. <laughs> Igor's face fell. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, said the Baron, adjusting his pantyhose. <laughs> Igor, go and get me the electricity charger. What for, master? Isn't it obvious? Electricity? A human corpse? This is for life! <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. I said, this is for life, not this is your life. <laughs> Got it from a second hand shop. <laughs> At that moment, before the doctor could utter another syllable, the corpse sat upright. Baron and Igor fled in horror as the brainless, zombie-like creature slowly stood up, lurched forward uneasily, took its first few steps, and said those three words that were to strike fear into the heart of mankind. My fellow Americans... <laughs> Good. Good stuff, as always. Thank you. Thank you. enjoyed you on the copycats and the Majesties, as I said in the intro, but right. you've done something new recently, haven't you? Yeah, it's a show called Andrew O'Connor's Joke Machine that I do impressions and a few jokes and a bit uh -huh. of magic. It's been really good fun. And you've done, done quite a few, I hear. Yeah, 20. Yeah. 20. Good for you. What are you going to leave them here as the clue? <laughs> right, I've got here a junior school cap. I'll okay, that's the clue, and their rhyme is. Right. This prize is major, not a minor that you'll find surrounded by China. That no idea. He's no. number two. <laughs> Neither has anybody, the nation, any of us. Andrew right. O'Connor, folks. Best of luck. Well done, Andrew. <laughs> Ooh, well, uh, there's a bit of chat going on now. What do you say about that one, then? Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, major or minor. Yeah? Music, I reckon. Any idea about that? Could it be something like a... Um... Cabinet or something, perhaps a cooker or something like that. Uh -huh. Some China's nearby. It's ready, yeah. to, ready to serve into. Well, it's it's good that you're thinking about it. I'm going to introduce the next item. When that's here on the table, we've got three. You have to make up your mind about what you're going to reject if you get through that question. So here's a young lady who's had great success over the past year or so on television, and she also supplies some great voices for that terrific show, Spitting Image. Tonight, she's on her own. Jessica Martin. Yes, it's me. Britain's answer to Lucretia Borgia. <laughs> well, first, I'd like to talk about some of the advantages women have had under the Conservative government. Right, now what should we talk about? <laughs> well, we ladies don't need any favours, do we? I mean, look at how well some women are doing in the media. Take our Selena, for instance. 
<laughs> well, welcome to the clothes show. And most men tune into this in the hope that I'm not wearing any. <laughs> well, later on, I'll be telling you who dresses Princess Diana and when she'll be learning to do it for herself. <laughs> well, I've got my own show too, actually. Isn't it strange how women comedians get mistaken for other women comedians? Though I never get mistaken for Marty Kane. <laughs> actually, I put on a bit of weight recently and somebody thought it was French and Saunders. <laughs> Well, I've been presenting the media show, which is supposed to highlight everything that's bad about television. So why they haven't got Nina Mishkoff to present it, I really don't know. <laughs> but today's subject is impressionists, and I'll be asking what it's like being somebody else all the time. <laughs> so mixed up! I'm all mixed up. I think I'm cracking up. Confining my drinking to opening hours. Shop opening hours. <laughs> when it's night, I give myself a fright. Dreaming ain't Kate Bush with any other hill. Or Chrissy Hind, the great pretender. No brass in my pocket, can't pay the bill. You rhythm me, Ganny, I hear angels sing. Queasy. Can't still be morning sickness. Now I know how our viewers feel. <laughs> still, you'll soon see Baby with his cute smile, silly sayings, and inane gurglings. But that's enough about Giles Brandreth. <laughs> when I make up and I look and see, I've turned into a cute girl called Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pregnant too. I don't know what it'll be yet. Tom's hoping for a goat, so we can sell the milk. <laughs> Am I insane? Am I going crazy? Is it all because the lady loves TV? Well, now, today on my show, <laughs> I'll be taking a look at the Irish problem. Yes, that's right. I'll be talking to Terry Wogan and Frank Carson. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I know I'm gonna be surprised, surprised. I'm Silo Chop. Would you mind not doing me? <laughs> Listen, have your word. They're gonna combine the wine program with Blind Date. It's gonna be called Blind Drunk. <laughs> so mixed up. Oh, Gladys, when am I gonna get me yellow coat? I'm all mixed up. Press your buttons now if it really gets your goat. I'm all mixed up. You know, I really think impressionists are a threat to the nation's sanity. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, how are you? Very well, great spot. As always, a great spot. As I said again in the intro, you know, you've had a lot of success recently, and that's marvellous and well deserved. But I know you're doing a pantomime this year. Yes, that's have right. you Have you done one before? I've done two before. Yeah. And uh, this is the second time that I'm playing Cinderella. You're actually playing Cinderella? Yeah. I can't imagine Cinderella with all those voices, can you? <laughs> say, say Joan Rivers, huh? Yes, who will go to the ball? It's for them to decide. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, love, great to see you here. What's going to be left as the clue here? This is the clue, and it's a piece of jade. Okay, there's right. the clue this time, and their rhyme is. And the rhyme is some Eastern plummets this entails, but be quick and stay on the rails. That's the third one, ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Martin. Bye, love. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, Cinders. Oh, look. Oh, listen to this. That's what I want. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. What do you think? Orange Express. Express. Oh dear, all of you. <laughs> oh great, that could be nice, but if it is, only two of you can go. Mm. Anyway, you've just heard that from Jessica. As we have three here on the table, I can read the other two again, remember? And this is the first one. Helen of the Brian Rogers Connection brought you in the New Testament and said, Grass, they say, a profit made, score more if it's what you're paid. That was that one. 
Item number two was the junior school cap, which came in from Andrew O'Connor, who said, this prize is major, not a minor, though you'll find it surrounded by China. There you are. That's three here on the table. Now you've got to choose one to get rid of if you get through the question. What are you going to do? They're not too sure. What are you going to do? What do you think, say, Laura? I think that yeah. one, because it's something to do with perhaps grass going under your feet. And yeah. That, uh, if you're better not getting paid, you might not... Uh, if you get the bin, then that's it. I see. Yeah. You don't fancy that one, whatever happens. You, just, you seem as though you want to get rid of that. All right, Laura, is that OK yeah. with you if you get through? Yes, yes. <laughs> right, that we've established. How about Nick and Gail? Yeah, we'll get rid of the Bible. You want to get rid of that too? Yeah. The New Testament, all right? We're agreed on that. Unanimous. That will be rejected. Whoever gets through the elimination question, which I have here. So good luck to you. Yes, look at them putting their hands. They can't wait to hit that buzzer. OK, I'm going to start to read this question. When you think you know the answer, you hit the button and answer. If you're wrong, I can offer it to the other couple, and, of course, they'll get a chance to go through. If they're wrong, then I'll keep reading it until somebody gets it right. Good luck to you. This man was a famous American actor. His real name was Marion... Uh, Nick's gone for it. John Wayne. John Wayne is absolutely right. Yeah. 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 Oh, goodness me. Oh, brilliant, says Gail, yeah. That's good, you knew that one, Nick. He knows his old films, too, yeah? Square Eyes is a great movie star, and well done. That means, of course, that you are through. Congratulations, and we've got to say goodbye to Pete and Laura here. And, of course, Karen is here with the money that they won in the quiz. And what did they win in the quiz? £360. £360, can't be bad. There's the ceramic dusty bin there, Laura. And... Just take a little look across there because Linda Lee Lewis has for you a consolation prize which happens to be a complete coffee making centre. It not only stores the coffee but it grinds it to your personal taste and it makes the coffee for you. Take a look at that. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Laura, take care, darling. All the best. Mm. Hey, thanks very much indeed. Love to Jersey. Give them a round of applause, folks. There you are. <laughs> Lovely. Take care. Good luck. Thank you very much. We know that you have rejected, of course, the New Testament. We're going to see exactly what that is after the break when we're back with Stephanie Lawrence and the Ronnie Scott Quintet. See you then. here and you've rejected of course the new testament no turning back now that's got to go you haven't had any no. thoughts on it have you in the break no, no it was <laughs> old. It was old. <laughs> okay <laughs> helen brought this in from the brian rogers connection the new testament and said grass they say a prophet made score more if it's what you're paid that's what she said all right grass they say a prophet made that could start you thinking about us laying a lawn down for you or something similar to that the clue object was the new testament and the word grass refers to an informer the most notorious informer in the New Testament was Judas, whose profit was 30 pieces of silver, which leads to score more, if it's what you're paid. We'll add a score more to 30, and you get 50. Take a look at this prize here. For the perfect hostess and party giver, it's a magnificent 50-piece canteen of cutlery, plus a sparkling set of crystal glassware made up of six sherry glasses, six whiskey, six wine, six brandy, and six goblets, plus six fruit dishes, three decanters, a fruit bowl, and a jug. <laughs> Would have been enough good cheer there to make any party go with the swing. Quite a prize, that, and what are you going to say? A lot of money, too. You could have done with that, engaged couple, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, you Very have to nice. put that on the wedding list and make sure that somebody else buys that for you. <laughs> Just keep thinking about Dusty Bin. Remember, he's the one you've got to get out of the way. Once he's gone, you have a good prize. Let's have item number four of three to one this evening. Is a young lady, it's always a pleasure to have back here at Yorkshire TV. She's had great hit musicals like Evita, Starlight Express, Marilyn, and she's had another one to that list recently with David Cassidy, Time. Here with a number from the show called Within My World, welcome Stephanie Lawrence. <laughs> Drive that we can't stop 
Sure it's aggressive, sure it's possessive. There's always been within my world an angel of love, a secret pearl, a silent ocean like the sea, and it's around. Awesome. Great. As always. <laughs> Listen, that's right. I said in the intro, since April, you've been doing time, eh? That's right. Not yeah. that sort of time, though. <laughs> <laughs> Great show. You really enjoy that. Yes, huh? I am. It's wonderful. Lovely. Good to yeah. see you back here at Yorkshire, as I say. And Thank what are you, you leaving as a clue here? Well, it's a very pretty feather. A feather. Mm. All right. And the clue is heavy metal, not hard but soft, doubled up and held aloft. There you are. That's the fourth one. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephanie Lawrence, my love. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Bye, lovey. Oh, yeah. What do you reckon, Nick? Any idea? Maybe the FA Cup, is it? it, could it? Be a... <laughs> he said it ain't the FA Cup, is it? <laughs> no, no, I don't think we could afford that. It could be stacks of stereo. Yeah, it could be. Could yeah. be what? Okay. Stacking stereo held aloft, held above each other. Heavy uh -huh. metal rock music. Yeah, well, music. it's good that you're thinking about something. I can read one of the other two here again. Which would you like to hear out of the jade or the school cab? Uh, the jade. jade. Want to hear that again? Yes, please. Okay, a piece of jade was brought in item number three from Jessica Martin, who said, Some Eastern promise this entails, but be quick and stay on the rails. So. Okay, the cap. Cap. Please. You want to get rid of the cap? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Okay, then. The junior school cap is being rejected, which came in item number two from Andrew O'Connor. Any idea what it is? You're just hoping. It's, I think it's think a Welsh, it dresser, a Welsh dresser. dresser. You think it's a Welsh dress so, dresser? So, and you don't so. want a Welsh dresser? Not really, no. No? We think they're better. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. <laughs> All right. I haven't opened it yet, but it is going, is it? Yes. yes. All right. This prize is major, not a minor, that you'll find surrounded by China. This prize is major, not a minor. Well, the word major could start you thinking about one of the big prizes, but the clue object was a junior school cap. The clue to the minor leading to that you'll find surrounded by China. Well, the only China junior surrounded by China on 3 2 1 is a ceramic dusty bin. You've chosen the major one. Great. Thank you, Dustin. You have to.
to go, mate. You have been rejected. Now then, you didn't know what that was. You took a chance, yes? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you He's gone. Food, <laughs> Thank you kindly, indeed. That means a good prize goes home with you tonight. You're in a good position now. We have one more to come onto the table, then we're down to the final three. Okay, item number five of three, two, one. Any jazz enthusiast is going to tell you that a must when they visit London is to go to the place that belongs to our next guest. Here he is with a number called Cantaloupe Island. Welcome, please, the Ronnie Scott Quintet. Marvellous as always, that. Thank you. Listen, Ron, that place of yours has been going some years and it's so 20, popular. 28 years. 28, is it and really? It seems like yesterday. Well, good to see you, though, Ronnie, Thanks, really. Nice to What's going to be the clue here? Well, uh, what I've got for you is uh, a tin of beeswax. Oh, OK. What you've always wanted. N couldn't do without one. A and tin the, of beeswax. And the clue is a four-seater that your family can share, a free service thrown in, plus a few spares. That's the last one on the show tonight. That's Ladies really and gentlemen, sweet. Ronnie Scott. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Good, mate. Bye-bye. Marvellous. Ronnie Scott. Oh, a bit of chat now, gang. What do you say about that one? Oh, look. Nick's looking around for some, some help. It's too obvious to be a car, so we reckon a three-piece suite or something like that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not obvious. Uh, you've heard that from Ronnie. 3 here on, three three on, three three on three 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 the table. I can read one of these two again. The feather or the jade. What do you want to refresh your memory on? Uh, what was it exactly? That's heavy metal. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Can I have the jade? You please? want to hear the jade again? Yes, please. Just to listen to it again, OK? A piece of jade came in from Jessica Martin who said, Some Eastern promise this entails, but be quick, 
and stay on the rails. Sounds like Orient Express, something like that. No oh. rails, mm -hmm. Eastern Promise. What do you think they want to get rid of, folks? Feather. No, they don't. Feather. Who? Feather. 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 Mm. Feather. Oh, thank you. Feather. Go on, it's been all right all night, so feather. What do you, Nick, is that okay with you? Yes, yes. You please, want to get yeah. rid of the feather? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, Gail, it's okay. Yeah, and fine. we know you don't mind that, do you? Okay, it's going to be rejected, is it? Yeah. Right, the feather which came in from Stephanie Not Lawrence, item number four. She said, heavy metal, not hard, but soft, doubled up and held aloft. Okay, Stephanie said, heavy metal, not hard, but soft. That might suggest something like a special evening out at a concert, but the clue object was the feather, leading to doubled up and held aloft. Well, doubled up is side by side. On something connected with feather is bed. And the heavy metal part is what it's made of. Look at this. Oh, it's perfect. Well, it ain't bad. Could be early to bed every night when the comfort of this fabulous brass bed is awaiting you. Comes complete with sheets, four pillows with pillowcases, plus a matching quilt and cover. Would have been sweet dreams. Would have been indeed, but it's been rejected. Thank you, Linda. Take it away. Oh, Gail. Yes, they said they could have done with that, and I'm sure, eh? Mm. All right, we're down to the final two of 3 two, one this week. The bin has gone, so, as I say, you're in a good position here. Being the final two, I can read them both again. Item number three was brought in by Jessica Martin, the piece of jade. She said, some Eastern promise this entails, but be quick and stay on the rails. You know what you think that is? Okay, item number five came in from Ronnie Scott, a tin of beeswax, and said a four-seater that your family can share, a free service thrown in, plus a few spares. So, folks, they need some help. Tin of beeswax or the jade? What one's it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is that to go or stay? I think it'll try. I'll leave the choice to you. <laughs> right, that one's going. Yes, Gail? Don't ask me again. That one's going. Is that all right, Nick? Yes? Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh. Okay, then, you're going to reject the tin of beeswax. But Ronnie brought it in. He said, a four-seater that your family can share, a free service thrown in, plus a few spares. Ooh. Hold on here. A four-seater that your family can share, well, that could suggest something like, say, a new bathroom with two loos and two bidets, mm. or a couch, or even a car, leading to a free service thrown in, plus a few spares. Well, remember, the clue object was a tin of beeswax, which is associated more with polishing furniture than cars. And that's what you would have won. Take a look at this. <laughs> Would have been the talk of the evening whenever your friends made a call. A magnificent dining table in oak, together with four matching chairs. Not only that, but you also get a 25-piece Spode China dinner service, a coffee set, and a complete set of cutlery in four place settings. In four place settings, and for the wedding, it would have been sensational. A wonderful prize, but Linda, take it away. It has to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. I think every one of these prizes could have got in the new home, couldn't it, eh? Oh, yeah, yes, well in. Certainly. Well, here we are then. This is the prize you've hung on to all the way along the line here. And it was a piece of jade brought in by Jessica Martin. Some Eastern promise this entails, but be quick and stay on the rails. Well, we know what you think it is. Some Eastern promise this entails. Well, that could be referring, referring to anywhere, the Near East, the Far East, or the Middle East. But the clue object was a piece of jade, and that suggests, of course, something to do with the Orient, the be quick and stay on the rails. Be quick, suggest express. You're right, the Orient Express. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is indeed a holiday tailor-made for the romantic on board the world's most famous train, the Orient Express. Your journey begins in London, and soon you'll savour the luxury of the best food and drink served by an attentive staff. Your destination, historic Venice. A chance to see the places you've only read about the Doge's Palace, the impressive grandeur of the squares, and the Bridge of Sighs. Yes, a six-day holiday you'll talk about for years to come. What about that, huh? Hey! What a, what a wedding present! Nick, Gail, let's go and get the tickets. Come on. OK. Gail and Nick, there you are. Linda has your tickets for you. Wonderful. And, of course, remember there is a small amount of money that you won in the quiz, and Karen has that. What do they win in the quiz?
120 pounds. 120 pounds, everyone. Lost the ceramic <laughs> dusty bin. Hey, Gail, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I know you're going to have a wonderful oh, trip. You too, really. Nick. Well done. There you are. There's no first class or second class <laughs> problems on the Orient Express. Through the <laughs> They've been smashing all of our couples tonight. And it's a great thanks to all of our wonderful guests. But most of all to you, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Have a good week. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> good. Good. like the real-life Peter Pan of the TV world, this fella. Pat Sharp will be opening the doors to his fun house tonight from 10 on Challenge, and that will be followed by a man who will be peeking through his curtains while Challenge walks up his path. Treyguard is letting us borrow his magical helmet in Nightmare.